Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, we're going to go over the sin function. We're going to use it to build a sine wave or create a sine wave. The function itself works on radians. And radians are just a value between 1 and around 6.283 approximately, or 6.3. And the first 90 degrees goes from 0 to 1.571, or pi divided by 2. 180 degrees is 3.142, or pi. 270 degrees is pi times 1.5, or 4.712. And these are all approximate values. And then the full way around 360 is 6.283, or 2 pi. The way radians are figured or calculated is you have your radius here and the same distance going around the circle, that's a radian, that's one radian. And it takes five plus radians to make it all the way around the circle. And it works out that way on every circle. As the radius gets bigger, then the diameter of the circle gets bigger and it just happens to work out. And this would be one radian, and then you go around here to about two radians, and three, four, five, and then whatever's left. We're going to use a serial begin here, because we're going to use a serial port to plot the data. And then this is the main loop down here. And the value is 6.2 or 6.3. So what I've done is I've created an integer, and I'm going to go from 0 to 63. And then we're going to convert x the variable x into a float. We're going to divide it by 10, which will give us a range of 0.0, .0 to 6.2. We're going to delay 200 milliseconds. I don't generally like to use delays, but for samples it's fine. And then we're going to serial print that value in the sin function, because the sin accepts a radian. That's why I went over radians up here. So it, it wants a value from 0 to 6.3. If you go beyond, it acts like a counter and it just loops. So 6.4 would essentially be 0.1 or 0 0.1. If you went up to 9, you'd take 6.3 minus 9, and that would be the radian value that would be in here. So y, or this flow value, could go above 6.3, but it's just going to interpret it into a range of 0 to 6.3. And then the range, or what sin will result in, is a negative 1 to 1. And it's going to be some value between those. I'm going to run this now, or upload it, and I'll open a window so you can see what I'm talking about. What it does is, as, as that increased to 6.2, it goes up to 1. Let me turn off the auto scroll. It starts at 0, and it's going to go up to 1. And then it'll start going back down to zero. And then it'll go to the negative range to a negative one. And then it'll start increasing again back to zero. And I'll do that over and over again. Another tool, this is the serial monitor. But another tool is the serial plotter. And that will plot these numbers on a graph. You can see this is the data as it's being plotted. And it'll form a nice sine wave. And this is your scale over here. And it's going from 1 to negative 1 back up to 1. But this small of a number isn't always very useful. So we're going to expand the number and make it a little bit, um, make the range a little bit more. Now on this range, it was negative 1 to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it times 100. So now our range is going to be negative 100 to 100. And you can see it went up to 100, and then it started coming back down. And it went down to negative 100 and back up. A byte has a value of 255. 
and this is a 200 range. So we can keep this as, as a simple byte for transmitting data between the Arduino and another device. I'm going to use this later on to send to a Nexion device, a display. And we can keep it in a byte value. And this is a nice example of a, a simple thing you could put on a Nano or just keep something to, as, a, as a sine wave generator. So that way if you need data that's moving, you'll be able to use it in other examples. So we're going to make another change to make it all above zero so the range stays in a positive way so there's no negative you could just send it as an unsigned integer and I've added this line now so we're still doing the and then we're adding a hundred so now the range is zero to two hundred and now you can see it's climbing up to two hundred and it's going to go down to zero But in some instances, you may want it to not have zero. You may want it to be a number above zero. So we're gonna add one more thing to make it go from 20 to 220. So the sine wave will be, will never hit zero. And then zero could be an error state or something like that. If, the, if it fails to receive any data, then you know that that's zero and there's a problem. And for this, we're doing the exact same thing again. Use our sin y times 100 to get our range. But this time, instead of adding 100, we're going to add 120. So now our range is going to be 20 to 220. This time I have the old one still going here. And you can see it'll raise it up just a little bit higher, and it's not going to come down as low. And this is just a fun way to use the sine function. And the sine function, like I said, it takes a radian, which is up here. And this is what those radians mean as far as a circle. But it really doesn't matter if you're using a circle or not. If you want to generate a sine wave, just start your value at zero. You can go up to 63. Another thing you can do is you could go to 630, but then you'd have to divide by 100. And and this will make it a little more granular because it's going to be two decimal places instead of one. The other thing is it's not going up at the same rate because it was going up in bigger steps. So now it goes more out this way. But this will still generate a, a sine wave. I'm going to time lapse this now so you see the whole thing. The screen's too small for this, but you can see that it goes up. It gives you a really nice sine wave form. If you want to speed this up, you can change your delay. You can change it to 20. Now you can see it's much faster. And if you want to increase this rate of it rising and falling, you would do that in this X part here because we, we multiplied this by 10, by a factor of 10. So if we change this to x, if we jumped to 10 at a time by doing this, we should get a similar waveform to where we started with. And so we're back to pretty much where we started. And you'd say, why would we even add that multiple of 10 or add an additional factor of 10? Well, then we can go in here and we can just change this to a different number we could do it through a variable or through different things. And then the sine wave itself, you could lengthen and shrink the sine wave based upon that variable. We'll do one more test. We'll make this five. And you can see that it's about in between where those two variables were. So it works pretty nice. But that's the basic of this sin or sine function. You just put a radian in it and then you can output that and it's like I said it's a really good test for things there's probably some other functions that I've just never used it for that it could be used for well that's about it for this video if you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel thanks for watching